Have you a definite plan for meeting your difficulties? There is a way to overcome your obstacles. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the voice of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, your friendly advisor on the art of living. The National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated stations make free time available to present The Art of Living in cooperation with the Federal Council of the Churches of Christ in America. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale is the leader of this weekly series of discussions, and today he tells his radio friends how to overcome obstacles. Dr. Peale's talk was transcribed earlier, especially for presentation at this time. If you wish to obtain a complimentary reprint of Dr. Peel's talk, do not hesitate to send a postcard or letter request to him in care of the station to which you are listening. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Dr. Norman Vincent Peel. Would you like to have a formula to help overcome and remove your obstacles? Here is one that worked for one man. Many others have tried it, and it works for them also. But let me tell you about it. The board of directors of a rather important industry had a project under consideration which involved considerable expense and some chances of failure as well as of success. Whenever anything of a positive nature was suggested, one man would invariably say, now just a moment, let's consider the obstacles involved. Another man who said very little, but who was respected by all for his achievements and ability, and for a certain indomitable quality which always characterized him, presently spoke up and asked, Why are you constantly emphasizing the obstacles in this proposition instead of its immense possibility? Because, the pessimist replied, To be intelligent, one must always be realistic. And it is a fact that there are certain great obstacles in connection with this project. What attitude would you take toward these obstacles? The other man unhesitatingly replied, What would I do about these obstacles? Why, I would just remove them, that's all. And then I would forget them. But, said the other man, that's easier said than done. Have you any technique for removing obstacles and for forgetting them that the rest of us have never discovered? A slow smile came over the face of the quiet man as he said, Son, I've spent my entire life removing obstacles. If you want to know how to do it, I will show you. He then reached into his pocket, took out his wallet, under the Isinglass window of which was a card on which were written some words. He shoved his wallet across the table and said, There, read that. That's my formula. The pessimist picked up the wallet and with a strange look on his face, read the word. Read it out loud, urged the owner of the wallet. And this is what he read. I can do all things through Christ, who strengtheneth me. The owner of the wallet put it back in his pocket and said, I've lived a long time, and I've faced a lot of difficulty in my time. But I've discovered in those words enough power to remove any obstacle. He said it with confidence. And being a very remarkable man who had overcome many odds, His words were convincing to the men around the table. So they put their project into operation. And despite the difficulties and the risks, it turned out a great success. The primary thing about an obstacle is not to be afraid of it. Believe that God is with you and you have the power to handle it. So the first thing to do about an obstacle is to stand up to it and not complain about it or whine under it, but forthrightly deal with it. Don't go across.
crawling through life on your hands and knees, half defeated, stand up and face your obstacles. You'll find they have, haven't have half the strength you think they possess. A friend of mine in England sent me a book by Winston Churchill. In this book, Churchill describes the British General Tudor, who was in command of a division of the British Fifth Army facing the great German assault back in March of 1918. The odds were heavily against him, but General Tudor knew how to beat an apparently immovable obstacle. He merely stood there and let the obstacle break on him, and he broke the obstacle. Here is what Churchill said about General Tudor. This is a great sentence worth its weight in gold. Here it is. The impression I had of Tudor was of an iron peg hammered into the frozen ground, immovable. General Tudor knew how to stand up to an obstacle. Just stand up to it, that's all, and don't give way under it. You will break it. Use that formula which the businessman suggested, and you will develop a powerful faith in God. As a result, you'll get a great faith in yourself, in your own ability, in your own power to do things. Your attitude will become positive, not negative, and the old master touch will come to you as you deal with your difficulties. Take the story of uh, Gonzalez, who won the National Am Amateur Tennis Championship. It was a grueling battle which he fought. The sports writer, in analyzing Gonzalez, said he had a marvelous serve and a skillful volley. But the thing that won the championship was his staying power and the further fact that he was never defeated by the discouraging vicissitudes of the game. There's a powerful sentence for you. He was never defeated by the discouraging vicissitudes of the game. That made this man a champion. It'll make you a champion, too. Get some real faith, and you, too, will have staying power. You will never be defeated by the discouraging vicissitudes of the game of life. But you may say, well, that sounds all right, but you don't know my circumstances. I'm as far down as a human being can get. Well, in that case, really, you are fortunate. For if you are as far down as you can get, there is no further down that you can go. There is only one direction you can go, and that is up. So your situation is quite encouraging. Try that formula of the businessman. Repeat it over and over to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I'll guarantee it will work. To overcome your obstacles, cultivate positive thinking. That's the answer. Most of our obstacles are mental. Ah, you may say, mine are not mental, mine are real. Yes, but your attitude toward them is mental, and what you think about them very largely determines what you do about them. If you think you can't, then you can't. If you think you can by some strange law of the universe, then you discover that you can. If you have been defeated by an obstacle, it is probably because you have been telling yourself for weeks and months and even for years that there is nothing you can do about it, that you are bound to be defeated. You have so emphasized your inability to yourself 
your mind has gradually accepted that conclusion. So what you must do is to get a new mental slant. Become convinced of your own power. When your mind becomes convinced that you can, then you can remove your obstacles. Some time ago, I played golf with a man who was not only a good golfer, but a good philosopher as well. As we went around the golf course, the game itself drew out of him certain gems of wisdom. I hit a ball into the rough, into some high grass, and said in dismay, now just look at that. I'm in the rough. I have a bad lie. I doubt if I can ever get out of this place. My friend said I wouldn't think that way about it. Do you think you could get a good hit if this ball were lying out on the fairway on the short grass? I replied, yes, I think I could. Why could you do better there than here, he asked. Because the grass is cut short on the fairway, I said, and the ball can get away better. He suggested, let's get out on our hands and knees and examine this situation and see just how this ball lies. So, believe it or not, we got down on our hands and knees. He said, now observe that the relative height of the ball here is about the same as it would be on the fairway. The only difference being that you have here about five or six inches of grass above the ball. Then he did a strange and whimsical thing. Notice the quality and character of this grass, he said. He pulled off a piece and said, uh, chew it. I chewed, and he asked, isn't it tender? Well, yes, I replied, it certainly is tender grass. An easy swing of your number three club will go through that grass and cut it like a knife, he said. Then he gave me this sentence, which I'm going to remember as long as I live. He said, the rough is only mental. It is rough because you think it is. It is. You have decided that here is an obstacle which you cannot overcome. The power to overcome this obstacle is in your mind, he continued. All you have to do is to keep your eye on that ball and tell yourself that you're going to lift it out of the grass with a beautiful stroke. Remember, the rough is only metal. Let the stiffness and tension go out of you and hit it with exhilaration and power. To this day, I remember the thrill and the sense of power and delight I had in the clean shot that dropped that ball at the edge of the green. Now, in life, we get into many rough places, and we're apprehensive and discouraged, and we think we do not have power. Have faith in God. Get faith in yourself as a result. Think positively, and you can get out of the rough. Now, just a suggestion. Down the street is a church where they teach you how to have faith. Why not go there and learn about faith, about positive thinking? Why not go to church on Sunday? Ladies and gentlemen, another program in the series, The Art of Living, has just been brought to you by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, your counselor on solving life's personal problems by the application of Christian principles to everyday living. If you would like a copy of Dr. Peale's talk for future study, do not hesitate to write to him in care of your local station. George Crook is at the organ, and this is Robert Denton speaking. Free time has been given by the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated stations to present this program in cooperation with the Federal Council of the Churches of Christ in America and associated city, county, and state councils of churches throughout the nation and came to you from New York. Portions of the program were transcribed. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.